Hi babe, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandra. I am the creator behind Bahati Life Apothecary and I'm a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We are gonna be vibing this week once again as I'm pulling up the chart and I will help you plan and prepare for this week all of what it is that you can expect so that you can make these planets work for you and not against you. Welcome to Bahati Life YouTube channel. Sit back, relax, as Jess pulls the charts and shares her predictions. Let's go ahead and dive right in, you guys. I have the chart pulled up on my mid right. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking directly at this astrological chart, but I'm also going to throw one up for you on the screen so that you'll be able to follow along. One of the first things that stands out to me is the fact that per use, the majority of the planets are currently retrograde. What does this mean? This means that our core foundation is being disrupted and there's a lot of adjustment that is currently occurring as our businesses, as life, as structure, the bones of our lives are being reevaluated and rebuilt so that they work in a way that's more high functioning for not only our personal goals, but also the goals of the divine. These are things that require a lot of flexibility and a lot of fluid movement, meaning like we have to learn how to kind of go with the flow and surrender to the process, even though the process may completely defy our own human logic and our own human understanding. What does this mean? This means that the things that we are witnessing in our lives as they break down, whether that be our relationships, whether it be our feeling of safety, whether it be our business practices or our bank accounts or whatever the case is, whatever it is that you're watching break down currently right now, I promise you it's being restructured in some way in order to make it better than what it was. When there's a retrograde that's happening, this is an invitation from the planets for us to live, learn, and do better. And hopefully in a way that feels better than it was before. However, if we're stuck in an old way of thinking about things or an old way of our perception of things, meaning like, in order for me to feel safe or in order for me to be successful, in order for me to be healthy, I can only do this. Then you're gonna be stuck in an, a rigid way of thinking that will ultimately kind of tank you. The best way to work with these energies is to stay open and flexible and to ask questions, to be curious and to rely more on your faith than what logically makes sense or your own understanding at this point in time. And as I'm saying that, you guys, I do wanna say that I understand that this requires a huge leap of faith on your part and that is the same thing that could really be tested depending on your personal charts. If you have uh, transits that are in your personal in your personal life that will really test your ability to have faith in the future or to have faith in the unknown or have faith in that things are gonna get, get better, you're definitely gonna be struggling with this. With these transits, you might be having a lot of impact on your health, right? These, this breakdown right now may, I promise you, is let's say it's your health, the way that you've been living your life or the way that you've been taught through generation to live your life is something now that if you're having breakdowns in the body, it's going to teach you to do things differently so that you can disrupt your old normal in order to rebuild and ground yourself in something that is going to be healthy and provide longevity, not only for you, but generations to come or anybody else that you cross paths with that is positively impacted by your testimony, by your own experience. So for example, let's say because of Saturn's transit through your chart, it, Saturn currently is transiting through the sign of Aquarius, you have this old way of the way that you would normally eat things, the way that you would normally move, the way that you would normally take care of your body. Now that Saturn is retrograde in the sign of Aquarius and it's been impacting your physical health, you might be feeling issues with your circulation, um, even issues with your bones, or even issues with old um, ailments kind of resurfacing now and flaring up. This is a time for you to explore alternative ways of healing and alter alternative lifestyles that are going to be like you're going to embed yourself within. Saturn is known for having structure and known for being the foundation 
that you are able to build your new life upon. Now that Saturn is currently retrograde, this is a perfect example, you guys, is what I'm giving you guys right now, but some of you guys will probably also relate to this transit. Now that Saturn is currently retrograde, moving back through the sign of Aquarius, this is a time for you to consider doing things in a different manner. For some of you guys, you are totally getting rid of procrastination or performance anxiety because your business and your purpose is now being led to mainstream forums so that people, resources, the people that need you, are you're made available to them. So that you're not hidden behind the scenes, but that you're stepping into the forefront and you're finally shining a light on your truth, your purpose, your voice, your testimony, your story, etc., etc. So these are all examples, you guys, of how these transits can impact. But I want to show you how your discomfort, your initial discomfort right now, and this is not a short-term discomfort, you guys. This is long-term. This this long-term buildup of I don't want to live like this anymore or I can no longer live like this anymore because my experiences have squeezed me into a space where I have no choice but to emerge through this space, but to emerge in this place or to emerge in this new lifestyle. All of those things are there to serve a greater purpose and it is very, very uncomfortable. So I really want to talk to you guys about that, that Yes, I'm referring to Saturn, but I also want you guys to keep in mind that it's not just Saturn, it's Pluto, it's Jupiter, it's Neptune, and it's also Uranus. Having said that, we do have Mercury, the planet of communicate, communication, retrograde this week, and he will be turning direct later on at the end of this week around October 2nd. I think about five o'clock in the morning. Basically, Mercury brings irritability and instability around communication and working bits in our technology and travel. Um, did I say communication already? Contractual agreements, those types of things. This is where, where we might have our mind set on something or we think that we're going in one direction and Mercury rules these tiny details and rules these little messages and information bits of information that you would do best if you had in your pocket if you would do best if you received that text message think of mercury retrograde this way let's say you're driving down the street or you're driving for to a vacation home um that is a three hour drive away from your normal house right and along that way, your GPS that's up, updated gets a notification and says, listen, there has been a crash on I-95 or whatever highway you're taking. It would You would do best if you reroute and go this way. It would not only get you there faster, but it's also very scenic. And you never know who you might find along the way, along that path. There's also a really awesome restaurant that if you wanted to, you could pull off on the side, enjoy a meal, and maybe stay for the day instead of making that original direct shot plan from point A to point B just so you can get to your vacation home and enjoy that vacation. Sometimes the rerouting will serve as a blessing in many, many ways, but um, on top of that, it might actually not only open doors for you, but it'll help you enhance your experiences here on earth that you normally wouldn't have had before that's the energy that mercury retrograde brings and it's the tinier details that mercury rules as it transits through virgo that it's now helping to kind of place at you know at certain points within your life instead of you getting frustrated at the fact that you have to reroute and you know, go a different direction, maybe explore where Mercury retrograde is currently taking you, especially because this week, I find this so stunning, Mercury is going to um, be directly conjunct, which means that Mercury is going to cross paths with and sit directly on top of Venus, the planet of love, relationships, and fun connections, and joy, and pleasure, and money. This is going to happen September 26th, roughly around 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, Venus, the planet of love and relationships, is also going to be trying Pluto retrograde. So basically what this means is that we have an amazing opportunity within the stars, within the planets, in order to connect deeply with our, our ability to make money, with our ability to refind money, things that we have lost. For example, you guys have heard me say this 
many, many times, please go back to your bank accounts and check, double check, triple check where your money is going, where it's flowing, where are you spending your, your resources, not only because you're gonna need it, but because I promise you there is a pot of gold that you may have missed if you're not careful. And the way to do that is by using resources, right? So let's say you plug in your bank account, one or many bank accounts into an app that streamlines and, and tracks your spending, you can see that there might be um, a, a membership that you might have subscribed to, a gym membership that you haven't canceled, and that once you cancel it, that $20, $30 a month can then be put into something else, like a brand new car or a sofa or whatever, fill, skincare, your skin, your new skincare routine. I'm not sure, honey, but basically what I'm saying is that there is a diamond in the rough here. You just got to look for it. These planets are shifting the sands in our lives and what happens is that when sands start to shift treasures start to get discovered you just have to be out there at the right place at the right time with your scanning device so that you're able to jump on it and that you're able to collect it and carry it home mercury retrograde and venus the two of them together are notorious for bringing up literal treasures upon the sand, right? So what does that mean for you? This means that you can use this transit to go consignment shopping. You can use this month, this transit to sell um, stuff that you have in your closet. For example, if you have shoes, if you have purses, if you have bags, things that it is that you're no longer wearing, that you're no longer rocking, that are actually hordes of money just sitting there but you just have to be able to find the treasure or work for the treasure and it will present itself to you okay there's plenty of different things remember i said this utilize your resources and ask for help this could mean asking a friend to help you to clear out your your closet but also use certain apps in order to modernize what it is that you already have so let's say you have a nice jacket, take a picture of that in really cute lighting and put it on an app that sells consignment shops and then use that money not only for a credit or to put it back into your bank account. There's so many different things that it is that you guys can utilize um, in order to make your money stretch. And it's specifically stretching the finances and stretching, um, you know, building your, building your bank, but your bank account up. Not only will this benefit in relationship, I'm sorry, not only will this benefit your finances, but it'll benefit your relationships. It will benefit your relationships because Mercury retrograde has a wonderful tendency to not only bring back people or connections from the past, but it helps to bring back certain conversations or communication that you may have been avoiding or missteps that have already occurred that are now an opportunity for you to fix it in this moment in time. When Mercury and Venus connect, this is a wonderful opportunity for someone to be who was normally kind of sti stiff or normally kind of um, stubborn, this makes a person want to work with you, show up with you, reach out to you, connect with you in order to bandage anything, any damage that would have been done, which is inevitable as human beings. Sometimes you say the wrong things. Sometimes when you apologize, it's not, you don't say the right thing. So it's kind of like lost in translation. Sometimes communication gets a little disrupted. Sometimes things get weird and wonky. It's just a part of being a human being. So this is a great opportunity for you to reconnect, not only with co connections from the past that you would love to rebuild upon, but any things that would be better if you addressed it now. But as Mercury, retrograde and as venus are transiting through the sign of virgo virgo does rule attention to detail and being of service to others so make sure that you are over extending and maybe even over explaining so that you know that other people are understanding exactly what it is that you're trying to say not only is this going to apply to your relationships with others but this is also going to apply with your relationship with yourself one of my buddies and i we took a break from all the hurricane planning and hurricane prep to just kind of jot off, like run off to a restaurant really quickly, grab a quick meal, grab a drink, um, and decompress from all the stress of everything. And while we were sitting there, he's so amazing. We were talking about journaling. I love, side note, I love seeing masculine energy talking about journaling and going to life coaches and going to therapists it just not only is it a wonderful outlet for you to become the better version of yourself but it's so good to be able to have someone to kind of like bounce ideas off of 
you about your own life and they're not so personally invested. So it's just so refreshing to hear this, my masculine energy friend, a very successful by the way, and such a good person inside and out, just kind of talking about you know his own experiences and how he journals every single day. It was so refreshing to hear that and I love the fact that these are my people, these are the people that are around me. But anyways, that's a side note, just a side note. Um, but Mercury and Venus together are a phenomenal time for you to connect even deeper with journaling or creative activities and creative pursuits because those creative energies and juices are already flowing and especially in the sign of Virgo and especially with Mercury, it's like the planet is can a planet of beauty and attraction and aesthetic is merging with the planet of communication and words and thoughts and music and poetry just flow so if you're a naturally creative person i highly recommend this transit for you in order to just light some candles or go for a walk it, it's also very physical if you get out of your head and into your body it ha has a really awesome tendency to kind of get those creative juices flowing all on their own, okay? The one thing that I do wanna say that I find is a little concerning is the fact that the sun, which rules our vitality, is sitting directly opposite of Jupiter. Jupiter is currently retrograde on starting October 27th. Now, this is a bit of a problem from what I can see and how I feel for many reasons. Not only does this create like a surge of egocentric type of energies, um, it can create a feeling of over optimism, like a sense of over optimism or o over like making choices that may not necessarily be good for the long haul, for the long term. Why? Because your ability to believe that the best can happen and the best can come is over exaggerated by the presence of Jupiter retrograde. I love this if you're trying to initiate or start a new project or to launch something, especially an old idea that you've been kind of sitting on. The sun directly opposing Jupiter, even though it sounds negative because it's a opposition, I don't believe that planets are all good or all bad. You can pretty much find how they would work for you. So if you're launching something that requires a lot of confidence just to get that initial boost, this is so great for your performance in that area, in that arena, because it's that boost that gets you started, right? However, if you're making big promises or if you're hoping to maintain that same level of energy and optimism and enthusiasm, I feel like it starts to kind of tipple into unrealistic expectations. I can really 1000% relate to this because I'm a person who is filled with ideas, just me alone, don't even take into consideration the conversations that is that I have with the divine, with my angels and my guides and all the things that is I talk to them about, things that is that I wanna do and all the things that they tell me that just you're gonna be able to do this in your life. I hear them saying that and I wanna do all of it right here, right now, in this moment. But it's really important that we pace ourselves especially you know with this sun opposition jupiter energy it pacing yourself is really essential unless you are starting something for the first time or you need that confidence boost in order to initiate something of great value initiate take that leap of faith go balls to the wall but at the same time don't expect that energy to continue and to carry on especially with so many planets retrograde use it for what it is but don't expect it to stay that way because things are definitely changing in these in these charts as the planets kind of unfold and as they progress throughout the week the other thing that i can also see here is sun opposing jupiter can create a little bit of a problem with <clears throat> this hurricane that it is that we're currently dealing with. I don't know if I mentioned it in this video yet because I've been talking about it all day, but it can create a little bit of more of a, um, uh, I don't say a surge, but it can create some problems when it comes to this hurricane that it is that we're facing. And of course, as an astrologer, I pulled the charts in order to help me kind of plan what I was going to do. At the start of this week, you guys, we have the moon sitting in the sign of Libra and as I say sitting I just I'm I just don't know if that's the right way to describe it The moon is transiting through the sign of Libra. So there's this 
non-committal, I don't know what I want, I just kind of want to explore my options type of energy that we're going to be first feeling at the start of this week. So I definitely am feeling this in my own personal life where the majority of us are deciding like should we stay, should we go with this hurricane that's going to hit. It's kind of like what do we want to do, what is the energy kind of feeling like, you can't really make up your mind. As this moon, as the moon starts to transit and pull through the rest of the chart and enter into the sign of Scorpio, this is when you're going to start getting some more direction and some more passion that is undeniable. This is what it is that I'm going to do. This is how we're going to have to act. This is what we're going to need in order to blah, blah, blah. It can feel very intense. It can spark a lot of anxiety. It can spark a lot of passion. It can ignite a lot of those darker feelings that can come up with any that might be difficult to face or that may be a challenge to face. But as long as you know what it is that to expect, or as long as you know what to expect, it kind of makes it easier for you to kind of like navigate through those waters. If you're someone who is highly sensitive, highly emotional, an empath, an intuitive, or you're impacted by the feelings of like your, like your own body kind of um, has its own ebbs and flows. These are things that, is, that I want you guys to take into consideration that you may need a little bit of or, or more quiet time this week in, in order to connect with more intimate connections that feel safe for you or to spend quality time by yourself. Just make sure that you're getting that quality time in and you should be fine. If not, I feel like you're going to get a lot of irritation, aggression, and you're going to need an outlet for those feelings, whatever it is that um, starts to resurface for you throughout the reminder, remainder of this week, but also keep in mind that if you want, journaling prompts are essential and will provide for you in order to get that energy and those feelings out. And that's something that I love. When the moon ruling our emotions enters into, into the sign of Scorpio, we're going to start towards the end of the week. This is an amazing time to be able, be able to channel those darker feelings, sit with those feelings, and allow them to serve you. What starts to show up for you during this time? I do want to say last thing that Mercury and Venus are all positively trying Pluto. Everything that's happening this week is there to make you feel powerful and to make you feel in control and also provide a certain level of trust and support that emotionally you may not have felt in a long time. Not only is this a gift from the divine, but it's also going to be the people that are around you and the things that you're able to create for yourself and the opportunities that present themselves. Okay? So, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be on pause for this week when it comes to working candles, creating oils, and those types of things, simply because we are getting impacted by those hurricanes, however, or the hurricane. Um, however, if you need anything as far as working your magic, the shop is there for you to browse and peruse at your leisure. Anything that is that you need in order to work your magic is there for you. One thing that is standing out to me the most is the Healing Waters Fix Candle, as well as the Pluto Death Oil, which is phenomenal, guys, phenomenal. The Fertility Oil is also great. Love and the Money Oil are all phenomenal oils to work with, regardless of the time, but just by looking at these charts with Love and Money standing out the most, I highly recommend those, okay? I'll link them all down below. If you need me, you know where to find me at BahadiLife.com and until then I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Bahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. 
Visit BahatiLife.com to browse the apothecary. And don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at Bahati Life, where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.